Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I had a little bit of free time from working on the 240SX. I'm waiting on some parts, which, you know, pretty much par for the course of any project. So figured I'd make some good use of my time and make some meaningful progress on the 62 GMC project. It's been a long time since I've filmed an actual project video on this truck, so hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if you'd like a more thorough update on why you haven't seen this truck on the channel in a very long time, I've got a very long update video that I filmed with my friend Andy who painted the truck. I've got a link to that video down in the description box below. So anyway, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to be installing a complete vintage air AC system today and I've got my friend Will holding the camera right now. He's going to be helping me with the install and giving me a helping hand. This is a pretty straightforward process. Obviously AC is a very nice thing to have. We've actually got a kit for a 1960 through 1963 Chevrolet. The dashes and the Chevrolets are a little bit different from the GMCs, so there's been some customizations involved here, which turned out really, really good. So I'm basically gonna walk you guys through the process. I'll give you some little tidbits and stuff here and there, and uh, yeah, we'll just make some awesome progress on this truck, finally. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, Will and I are gonna tag team this install. So while I start working on the compressor bracket and whatnot, he's gonna start assembling the evaporator unit. Well, assembling is not really the right word. It all comes pretty much all together. It's this one big unit right here. On the other side, there's the expansion valve, the heater core is built into it. So there's already pre-bent line sets, as you can see over there. There's a couple of brackets that need to be installed. And basically this is just gonna mount underneath the dash. I've got to drill a couple of holes in the firewall and they have this plate right here that goes over one of the existing holes. That's where the line sets come through the firewall. Here's what I have to work with. I've got the sanding compressor that comes with the kit on top, as well as a bracket assembly that Vintage Air sells to bolt it to this 5.3 that I've already got in the truck. Down below, I've got the condenser, dryer, some fittings, various brackets, and then some more pre-bent lines for the engine compartment. The line sets coming off of the evaporator box are gonna come through this existing hole in the firewall. That plate on the table over there that I showed you guys with the four holes, that's where it's going to mount to right there. I do have to drill a couple of holes in the firewall for mounting the evaporator box in a couple places. Fortunately, they have a template that comes in the instructions, so that'll make things a lot easier and less sketchy. <laughs> but the compressor bracket is gonna to mount to the passenger side head right here. Um, yeah, it's gonna be really cool seeing all this finally come together.
So the evaporator's under the dash, the lines are coming through the firewall, making good progress. Next is gonna be installing the air conditioning compressor bracket, and then we're gonna move on to installing the condenser in front of the radiator. So just a couple little things to mention when assembling the evaporator unit and putting those lines on there. All of the seals are done with special O-rings, and those O-rings need to be lubricated with mineral oil, which comes in the kit. It's important to note though, you don't want to over tighten all of the fittings. Vintage Air actually gives you torque specs, but if you're not able to check torque specs, you know, you just want to give nice and firm because again, the O-rings are going to be your seal. It's not like, um, you know, like a flare fitting or something where you just get it, you know, good and tight. So get it snug, maybe just a little tick more and, you know, let the O-ring do its job. The other thing is the panel for the firewall right here, it has two different size holes. We got the grommets in the holes correct, but the panel was flipped upside down because one of the screws is offset just a little bit. So we fiddled with that a little bit, got it in order. So yeah, everything's going good so far. Let's go ahead and, you know, continue on. Will and I made a lot of progress, but we didn't get quite finished yesterday, so I'm gonna work on wrapping this up. Thankfully, we've got all of the big stuff out of the way. Now it's just a matter of routing hoses, getting the ducts installed underneath the dash, and of course, the wiring, which will be at the very end. So right here, I have the suction and discharge hoses for the refrigerant. They have crimp fittings on one side, and then the other sides are um, open. You gotta you know, cut the length and then crimp on some fittings which to do that it's a lot easier if you have one of these hydraulic crimping tools which have you know different dies for different size AC line whether it be a you know, standard wall or reduced barrier and you might be able to rent one of these I'm not a hundred percent sure but anyway that's what I'll be using I've also got to run the heater hoses and install this bypass valve um, on the hot side the pressure side so on the 5.3 truck water pump that I've got in there right now, you have 5 8 fittings and 3 quarter fittings, 3 quarters uh, closer to the radiator. To run 
the bypass valve into the heater core, you want to use the 5 8 fitting. That's the pressure side, the hot side, and then the three quarter going to the thermostat is your, you know, return, low pressure, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, just a little bit of tidbit right there. I really, really like their directions. Like it is so easily explained right here with all the diagrams and stuff. So anyway, that gives you kind of an idea of where you would route the suction discharge hose, heater hoses and whatnot. So anyway, let me get back to it. So for those who don't know, the GMC and Chevrolet pickups, um, they're very similar obviously, but there's a bunch of little nuance differences. You can pretty much buy every single aspect of a Chevrolet, but the GMC specific bits are a little bit harder to work with. This is a good example of that. While the vent setup right here underneath the you know the right side of the dash will physically work with the GMC, there's a big difference. The Chevrolet has this double hooded design. So, you know, you got the hood over the instrument cluster. There's another hood over the passenger side, whereas the GMC is just straight across. So the Chevrolet has these cutouts or not cutouts, but dips right here. And the vintage air vent setup has divots in it to accommodate that little dash detail on the Chevrolet. So my buddy Andy ended up doing some creative fiberglass work little bit of body work and whatnot and filled those hoops in and then of course painted it to match with the GM son of a gun gray and the silverized metallic the little pinstripe across it works really really well with how the rest of the dash is so this looks like it was purpose built for a GMC now um, but it's not technically it's all one of a kind now I've also got the Vintage Air switch set up in here. I gotta pull this back out so I can hook the wiring to it, but just so you guys can have an idea of what it looks like. The GMC dash was quite a bit different right here. Obviously, you know, done some custom metal work to fit a um, you know modern double din radio. These are USB ports, one to connect to the radio, one just for charging, and then the whole you know heater switch setup, which used to be more over this way, has been moved up here. So a lot of neat little details going on right here that you may not know, you know, if I didn't explain it to you, but yeah. So old school looks, a little bit of modern tech, and I think it turned out really, really nice.
pretty much done for the moment. I can't 100% finish the install in this video because I'm not quite there yet with the truck. I obviously can't charge the system until the thing's running. I don't want to finish the wiring for the vintage air system right in this video just because I have to finish all the under dash wiring. So there's a lot of things going on all at the same time and they all just kind of need to work within each other but this is a major major step of progress and i'm so happy to get you know parts off of my workbench so um a couple or a few other things i need to do aside from the wiring i've got to install the drain tube for you know the condensation drain from the evaporator box that comes through the firewall i've also got to install a new belt i've got that on order so you know that's pretty easy other than that it's just a matter of chipping away at this truck I appreciate those of you who have followed this build. I obviously wanted to film a lot more content than I ended up doing, but it is what it is, and I explained that in the last GMC video. Again, that link is in the description box below if you want to check it out and get all caught up. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, do that too and make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.